I view um, absence and presence as um, as ideas that are that are uh, apart in a binary way. I think of them as duality. I think of it's it's sort of I mean it's not really a maybe a Western way. I mean I clearly am the only and I'm intrigued about your backgrounds all because you're all not born in this country and so because this is being done here then obviously the implicit truth is that you're but you know just sort of geographically besides being artists dealing with just an absence of presence from actual culture but yes. but nevertheless so but my I mean music would seem to be, I mean, beyond being a miracle that it was even like invented, mm -hmm. but it actually, whether invisible or not, just like breath or speech or thought, it does take up either sonic space or it takes up some kind of, you know, physical reality that is invisible. So therefore, it is both, and it's not. I mean, time in a Western way is usually conceived to be linear, and but in, a, but in older traditions that are, you know, that go. Before the begin before Greco-Roman, let's say, or you know, the begin the foundations of Western history. If you could look at Hinduism or Buddhism, you go in to these you know caves okay, and so on, and there there's no beginning and end. You sort of enter in, and the the it's it's sort of choose your own adventure each time. And so in these older traditions, I think maybe they are. This is not new thinking you know, about. You know, Absence and presence being almost, uh, you know, on a knife's edge, and so maybe when there's space in between, like with music, or I'm interested in things that are um, both, let's say, painting or sculpture, mm -hmm. or I mean, if you think about, uh, you know, I had a, a wonderful professor in graduate school, and something always stayed with me, and it was about video, and it was how, okay, we, you know, you know the projection itself, okay, dissolves the wall. But that's not reality, but it is, in a sense, okay, accepted. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Fiorella Gonzalez Vigil. I'm a Peruvian multidisciplinary artist. I'm working um, basically on the concepts you know, of uh, intimacy, vulnerability, uh, and invisibility by way of um, textiles, installations, ceramics, anything that can help. Um, address the sub these subjects or something related to them also. So yeah, this is uh, what I do. I live right now in Lima. I'm Frank Lesbos, I'm from France. Uh, I live in New York for three years now. And I'm mostly a video artist. Uh, not only because uh, I, I, I create some landscape and I film them, so I, it's also close to sculptures and installations and uh, I'm glad to be here. <laughs> I'm Paul. Um, I am a publisher and after graduate school was a curator in the art department at Lincoln Center and so my work really vacillates between really producing and commissioning art. And I also am intrigued by this concept because it is uh, something that has informed uh, a lot of my thinking as an adult. Hi, I'm Giancarla Rodea. I'm an interdisciplinary artist, originally from Mexico City, and now I'm based here in Brooklyn. I work across disciplines. I have a background as a musician and as a sound artist, and currently I'm working mostly with video, performance, installation, and I'm very interested and invested in understanding how we insist on recording memories and using time as this uh, medium to, to create these um, layered experiences. And I, I wanna, I, there's something about that that I'm, I'm very interested in and wanna make work through that. Hi, I'm Analia Segal. Um, I'm originally from Argentina. I've been living in New York for 20 years. Um, I have a mixed background between art design and architecture, and that has been a big part of my work. And when I moved to New York, uh, I was really shocked by the lack of space and uh, the difficulty in uh, working, and, and it really created a big impact in my work and the way I was thinking about sculpture, that it was the way I started, because I was, was always interested in materials and three-dimensionality. 
And when I moved here and I couldn't find an affordable place to work uh, or live, or I was, I actually moved 10 times in the first 10 years, uh, I really started changing the way I was thinking about sculpture in general, but space and uh, thinking like any immigrant, this the impact that displacement has. And, uh, and I think that the topic of absence of presence was very much part of uh, my change in the way of thinking. And so wh every time I start a conversation about or a talk about my work, I use the image of the ornero, which is the national bird of Argentina that creates this incredible, beautiful um, uh, nest made out of uh, mud. And so he's like foraging, like most animals do, and collecting little pieces, you know, of straws and, and, and mud and builds this beautiful sort of furnace uh, nest but what I really like about it is that he only lays eggs there once and then other birds use them so I always thought that that was also this incredible metaphor for the work of art and what we do and this idea of the presence or the creation of something and this relationship to something that becomes absence and then it gets inhabited again by you know someone else just say no why you are so happy? Ta, ta. Who is there? What great arms you have. What great ears you have. What great eyes you have. What great teeth you have. Hmm. What are you looking at? And what are you doing in my bed? Cuando vuelves por aquí? ¿Qué te muestra el espejo? Tap, tap. Lately, the subjects I mentioned is what I'm focused right now, but um, I think they come also from a project I did here in New York because I lived here a few years ago. I was doing um, my thesis project in SVA. Um, I, I was working also there for that project about um, physical spaces or architecture as a stimulator for memory. Mm. So I, um, I focus on, on uh, my grandparents' house. Um, I, that house um, was built, no, was um, uh, sold and um, uh, demolished like more than 15 years ago. It was um, so. It was an. It was a very important place for for us, for our family, as a gathering point, a place where that meant a lot. So that place has a lot of memories, a lot of feelings uh, that surround it. So coming here to New York also made sense for me to continue developing that subject because I was away. I wanted to to have something a little more solid, than, but it was also only memories. But still, it has this presence, this very important presence. And also at that time, <coughs> while, while I was thinking about this subject, I wanted to, I read an article about one Chilean um, philosopher, Adolfo Vázquez Roca, and he wrote something about Gordon Mata Clark's cuttings here in New York. The subject was a little different, but I found it interesting for me because it had something related to the house as a memory device. So I took that thing also together with my, with this idea I had of the house and I started developing the project. I wanted, I'm trained as a painter and I wanted to, to not work as, a, um, as um, making the illusion of space, but creating really s like physical spaces so that you with your body could connect or could uh, experiment really the space. So. I created these installations with uh, ceramics, textiles that based from these memories which <coughs> are usually always changing depending on new experiences that you have and also also I, l I have I usually dream a lot with this house so I believe this house is no longer what it was it's something completely different and I wanted to to do that in this project too like adding like a new like a new soul to this space what i found it important 
like for this project this was a uh, I came from this idea of the of this experience of a, a real house, of my experience there with the, all the physicality, the materiality, and um, then I translate that, or it kept only as memories, as images, something intangible, and I wanted to reproduce it again and make it something uh, again physical, um, something that you could uh, at least you, you know, usually you don't touch too much artwork. But still, I think the body relates to that in a different way as, as when you see something uh, just as a, as a painting or something. Yeah, absolutely. I, I see similarity in our practices. I'm also uh, working with embodied memory, but I'm mostly working with, with trauma. And in the case of my personal experience as a Mexican immigrant, um, which has been happening in Mexico and also in Latin America for a long time ago, which is... Uh, oppressive systems, uh, systems of terror, oppressing populations. So I'm also very invested in creating these. I, I use fiction a lot. So um, these structures that can be inhabited by the audience and, and through performance as well. And there's this uh, pseudo archive, this archive that can be very malleable and accessible to everyone. And it's fascinating how sometimes audience comes into the installation and starts organizing the images or flipping the images. And to me, there's a lot of power and agency there because I think, I believe that we can uh, access these uh, sometimes so rigid structures. They're not, they're flimsy and we can play with them as well. Yeah, I think that I, I relate to both of mm -hmm. uh, the concepts that you guys are saying in the work and seeing images of the work. I also saw a lot of connections, uh, interest in certain kind of materiality that is also, I think it's it's also very Latin American, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, and, it, and this idea of trauma, like having grown up in Argentina in the 70s under a military government, for me, there was always this... Uh, conscious silence uh you know and and i owe the other image that i use apart from the ornero is the one of the iceberg right they you know we always know that there's something much larger behind the surface and so i work a lot in my work with that sort of intuition or that knowledge uh and thinking that the viewer is the one who's my accomplice in in that experience somehow uh so for me uh i think that we're constantly transform the space we inhabit. And that's why I mentioned that I moved 10 times in the first 10 years, because when you moved into a new place, there were like marks on the walls, the hole that somebody left behind, you know, all these traces of people. And uh, also because here the how uh, apartments are built, there's sheetrock panels and space in between. So it was the first time that I could hear my neighbors and uh, I had a very clear, experience of somebody behind the wall. Ah. Ah. Aquí. Ahí. No, not like that. Like this. Ahora. Ahora no. Oh. Oh, yeah. Enough. Enough. Mm. It's never enough. Ten cuidado. This is not the right road. Tap, tap, who's there? You know, other bodies that have been in that space before me or after, and I started thinking of that as a sculptural tool somehow. And, um, and I, was, I was always, because of my background in design and architecture, I was always fascinated by uh, the worn mar marble steps or, you know, the shiny uh, bronze handrails and, you know, thinking how time transforms these materials in it. And it's... The, the the joke that I always make is like, you can technically be able to defrost an iceberg by licking it. Mm. It will just take a very long time. But, you know, I was, because my background was so much in, in relationship to materials, I really, you know, was fascinated by this idea of time and how it affects and change our surroundings. And recently, in the last six years, I started making videos about that and uh, discovered the power of sound. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the same way that, you know, it has this fascinating and terrifying presence. Totally. Uh, <laughs> Sound is unavoid unavoidable. Even if you cannot 
physically hear it, you can still, your body still perceives the sound yeah. waves, yeah. I, I totally agree with you in terms of this in-between space, mm -hmm. you know, between absence and presence. And, you know, when I project a video on the wall, for me, it's because the wall is, is the skin. So in my videos, I don't have physical presence of humans, <laughs> but all the sounds are, you know, referring to that. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Okay. In my video, I don't use any people also. I mean, I was using people, but... Uh, when I came to New York, uh, I was uh, in front of the pro problematic with space and money also. So I started to reconsider my uh, practice and erase people by those economic things. And, uh, and also the space, so I decided to do like some big things in small things. Uh, so I was filming some small settings and try to animate them in a way that there is no people, but it's okay. You can talk about emotions. I usually talk about emotions and uh, experimentation, you know, in my videos. Uh, and I use sound as a, as, a, as a character. It's very important. I never did a video without any sound. So, or I do the music myself, or I invite musicians. Sometimes I do some video performance with musicians, which means that I try to create the video in the in front of people like a real time thing Inside, but I'm trying to animate the stage settings. Like usually, I use like fire, water, or some movements, or some. Uh, I can uh, pull things with the uh, with the ropes. I mean, very in an artisanal way. I, I hate uh, over technologic things now. I'm more like in a, in a practice of craft craft things, like Robert Fidu, those kind of people. And, uh, but I was like in, into this uh, problematic of, okay, at one moment there is no people in my video. Uh, where is the human, what, what kind of human side do you want to talk about? Because at the end, it can be like just craft, you know, like things which are like removed from uh, with a few uh, st strategies like, uh, Putting things, putting fire, this and that. And I said to myself, "What can I? Do? How can I? How can I um, uh, put some human things, sites in my in my video?" And I, so few by few, I managed to progress those things. I made a video in Japan, for example, and I was in Tokyo, and I, I wanted to do a video about uh, the, um, the. Let's talk about one example. Maybe it will be more like uh, specific. Uh, I wanted to make a video about earthquake and catastrophic things, you know, the uh, Fukushima, this and that. But I didn't want to do it like in a um, pathetic way, or, oh my God, it's horrible. I wanted to erase the thing uh, towards poetry. So I made a fake sea and I was animated the fake sea and I made some few models of uh, rest of civilization, like uh, which was like 
small buildings, uh, the, uh, uh, factories, uh, pipelines, those kind of thing, and a little bed with a with a with some uh, drawers. I mean, some things which are related to bedrooms for for a child, a boat, this and that, and animated them. Uh, with the music I made with musicians from, from Tokyo, Tennis Court. At the end, without any people, for maybe the first time, uh, I really have something which was talking about humanity, with the absence, but the, pre the, 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 the they were still very present, you know, like, uh, mm. so that's my kind of experience about absence and presence. I, I do see a connection in, in our work in, and about this liminal space that we're talking about because we are immigrants, so we're displaced, we're in this liminal space probably for the rest of our lives. So, um, yeah, it's fascinating how we're dealing and grappling with this and it, it comes to, through the work and through our experience. And um, yeah, uh, the, this liminal space is, is, is fascinating. And uh, I think even though some of our works may not have the human presence, meaning the body, the human presence is very much in there through sound, through artifacts, through remnants, through memory, etc. yeah. When you're talking about how do you do something that's invisible or that is almost the impossible, how do you show divinity in an image? Uh, how do you, um, so there's something sort of noble about that and ingenious to me. And, and so, you know, the idea, you know, a halo as a signifier or something that is um, sort of super real or, okay. And, but my favorite of all is in these sort of transfigured images. I mean, going to the caves, I mean, how do you show something of, of you know, 20, 30,000 years ago, how do you show movement or the sound, but you get the sense of it? If these people had, you know, equipment, I'm sure they would be making video 20,000. But in these, in these, you know, 13th, 14th, 15th century, beautiful images, you know, the sort of the um, the messages from God, you know, sort of the Annunciation, or these these very you know sort of um, you know, perfect looking lines. Okay, going from a dove to okay, uh, you know, whether it's Mary or Saint Catherine or so on, or um, or actual speech, you know, maybe in Greek or so on. That's that's announcing in ways that is that is. That is actually believable because it's 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 so um, surreal that we you know it would be like if you could see the words, or, you know, coming. That it's it's so it's an ingenious way, but based on they they didn't know any other way. More, but but it actually works even now. I think as a very um, beautiful gesture. It's interesting what you say. As a, as a video, I'm a video maker, but I'm mostly uh, I, I wanted to be like a painter, but I I was very bad in techniques and also. <laughs> Uh, at, at this time, when I started uh, to take care of those things, uh, painting was done in my country. <laughs> I mean, that was the end of the paintings. So, uh, but I started to f to to do video like I do with the, with the paintings, uh, which means like I start from the void, there is nothing, and then I establish some landscape, and then I start to elevate the thing from the void, so the absence, and try to find like uh, in a way at the end to search these humanity things, you know, that I'm trying to talk about, like experimentation.
as a bad painter, I became a video, video artist. But I'm not doing video in the sense of recording things. Uh, like, you know, usually like people have the feeling that video is like video art. There's people who are doing things. I don't know, like how in the streets, you know, it's, uh, it's uh, I mean, I don't know. There is like so many things of uh, different kind of video. I don't know what I'm talking about. That. No, it's <laughs> okay. No, but it's, no, but it's, it's, it's interesting really. to hear you because I think I came to video from sculpture mm. and I see uh, the, the spatial possibility that video gave me and this mm -hmm. possibility of including yeah. sound from also as this you know, in relationship to space. But the earliest forms, it seems, of, of, of actual image making does have those stenciled prints, and they're all over. If that's not, okay, both, you know, sort of a tattooing, but simultaneously, it's the removal, but you get the impression, and it's very powerful.